Hi everybody, it's Robbie, and it's a quiet Sunday morning. Well, as quiet as it's going to be. I hear birds singing and a few little things going on. And I thought today, I just had some coffee, that I'm going to do a walkabout. Gary used to tell me that's what he used to do a lot when he lived in Australia, just go on his walkabout. So I'm not going to be talking about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, what I'm buying, what my new ventures are just going to do a walkabout on the property right now. So you can see what's going on. We're in spring and things are just starting to grow and it's just so pretty just to walk around and see what's growing. On garden tours I do explain how I do it, what I'm doing, what I'm feeding, but right now I'm just kind of doing you know a walk around, maybe discussing different things like the birds coming in, there's been gross beaks coming in now. We haven't seen those for months and months and months. So they're probably coming in to nest. And the white crowned sparrows, I love them. Even though they do some damage to the garden, they're gone. I haven't seen a single one. Look at that. That's my purple sprouting broccoli. It's full. I've been picking it and eating it sweeter than regular broccoli. And uh, just been observing the animals. There's been a whole lot of lizards lizards everywhere and rabbits of course squirrels i've got both the ground squirrels and the tree squirrel that comes in and you can see i'm prepping and getting ready to start planting more today we're like 68 degrees and it's what 11 o'clock right now so it's you know cooler than normal they said we're below average and believe you me i know that we have been below average so a lot of things that i've tried to grow just isn't growing yet and I oh I think I'm doing on a throwback Thursday moringa because somebody asked me about their moringa tree and I found some great footage of my tree so I'm gonna do that but I've been trying to grow it and it just doesn't want to grow and I realized I didn't grow them until June until our weather was warm and stayed warm in the evening but all in all, you know, even though things aren't growing the way I wanted, I don't have a lot of zucchini, just new plants. I've had food all winter. This is all food. Everything you can see is food. The only thing that's not edible in my garden are the geraniums. I don't think they are. I'm not eating them. The hummingbirds really flock around them and they get something out of them. There must be some sort of pollen. So the red geraniums get the hummingbirds and then at night you'll see the big moths that are hovering around it. But we've had, oh, sorrel. And sorrel, that grew, of course, all winter long and looks beautiful now and looked beautiful all winter. But everything you can see, everything in the garden is edible. So that's one thing we had was a lot of greens and some tomatoes and things. And so I'm okay with that. I'm just quite anxious. I think I'm over anxious and I really, really want to get going on planting a whole lot more and seeing the plants taking off which they're really not, even though the strawberries are. And I did the video on setting that up. And that's doing really good. Gary and I ate strawberries yesterday. So now we're gonna walk into this part of the yard. That bottle brush Gary found, it grew by seed. And he planted that years ago and that's doing really good. And of course the papayas are still growing. And I'm gonna do a walkabout all the way around the property. I'm not gonna go onto the deck. That's a whole different subject. I'm just gonna do the area here where we're gardening. Those are pomegranates coming up. We'll see what grows on that. And let's swing around and let's go. I'm not gonna walk over there because I'll do that on my garden tour. But that's the wall that I'm trying to set up. The moringa is coming back as you can see. The eggplant really needs to be trimmed. So does that tomato either trimmed out or left. But I've gotta do something with that. And that Swiss chard is two years old. So little by little, we're getting to things. And of course the truck bed. But anyways, as I was saying, I'm just gonna do a complete walkabout and you'll see what's going on in my garden and Gary's and updates on things maybe you haven't heard about for a while. Look at this. That is a fungi growing out of the wood chips. Isn't that cool? It's breaking down the wood chips which makes the plants grow. It's all part of nature. And sometimes they're bright yellow and sometimes they're bright orange and they're all different colors. 
and this one today right now that's coming up is a very pale but still bright around the edges yellow look how big it is now this one I've, is not that big compared to my hand but some of them are massive so I will leave that alone and if the Sun comes out it turns brown and then it just disappears into the wood chips and becomes part of the soil now this is the funniest little insect and he's on some of that slime mold that fungus that grows in the wood chips first thing first time I moved here my kids brought one of these in look mom they said look at this dried up dead bug and it did look dead and they sat it on the table I don't know and they uh, left it and they said look it just looks so weird because it was hard as a rock well he played dead for a few hours and then he just suddenly crawled away isn't that something they're interesting interesting insects isn't that cool I'm glad we got to see that because we don't see that every day so let's keep going Gary told me this is about 8 to 10 inches of wood chips and I can take anything I want just dig a hole take and plant in it so I am doing that okay see all the sow thistle back there we actually use that in our green drinks and the reason we're not pulling it out right now is all the goldfinches come in and that's their food they get the seed out of it and then some of the other birds eat the greens out of it so we're leaving it for the birds for the wildlife because that's very important to them okay this is the truck bed and I should do a throwback Thursday on this this is the one that grew those 50 squash that time spaghetti squash and this is just three different types of Swiss chard growing and I haven't planted anything in here not even the avocado tree and again if that thing doesn't throw fruit it's going to be dropped because I have other ideas for this but this has got the green variety the one that's mixed it's green and kind of red and then it's got a red variety and I don't see the real red variety oh it's back there the other thing that's interesting is see that container I'm composting in place in there I'm throwing whatever extra I have greens just basically plant trash in there well look what it do it's done here this massive bush which is one plant and let me tell you this tastes so good mmm oh my gosh it is so good I've been eating and eating it since I started eating it and Gary's been coming up and eating it that's radish I planted radish in there which kind of grew and went to seed right away so I don't like planting a whole lot of radish out here but it went to seed dropped some seeds and this thing turned into a monster whoa there she is we know she's got babies in that truck somewhere see she's watching me do you see her let's zoom in like usual I got distracted by wildlife I'm always distracted by wildlife as I was saying this grew massive and big because of that compost bin I flood that thing now, I know it's full of earthworms and everything they gravitated and went in there and that is draining into the truck bed and this is where it leaches out you'll see when I water it it just runs out here it's fed this radish plant into this what four or five foot monster it's so good I'm gonna let it just do its thing I'm not gonna collect seed on it I don't think maybe I will collect a little but the birds are probably going to get the seed before I do but the flowers taste like radishes like you're eating radishes and I've got to put that on a salad because we were just picking it and eating it that's the way we've been eating it and it's it is massive and beautiful getting back to the truck bed yes she probably has babies in there and like I've explained on the wild rabbits here uh, the ones we have they dig a hole and then they bury their babies after they give birth and they go back and unearth them and they may have a tunnel underneath sometimes they do sometimes they don't but they unearth them they feed them and then they cover them back up so she has not been eating in my truck bed there's no leaves that she's been eating she doesn't want me or anybody to know that she's really hanging out here but I'm gonna suspect let me see if I can get you in here I'm gonna suspect because I'm watering it lightly that this is where her babies are let's see if I can get and the reason I suspect that is the soils loose I don't want to disturb it so much see how it's loose and it's she must go in there it must be underneath somewhere and she digs them out and she feeds them and then she goes on her merry way 
So that's really interesting. But she's been here all week. I come over here, she pops out, and she kind of like runs away like I, she wants me to run after her. And of course, I'm not running after her, but it's, you know, get, to get me away from the truck bed. I am still watering the truck bed, but I'm watering it differently. I'm watering more that end here and not this side too much. I don't want to flood the babies out. Obviously, whatever way she's got him, it must be fine because I've been watering it normally the way I usually water it and it didn't hurt him. I mean, she went ahead and built her nest somewhere in there anyways, but I'm just going to water that end in hopes that I'm right that her nest is there. Okay, let's hike down the trail quietly. Now, this is the trail that Gary drives his truck down to go when he's going to bring things to his garden. Generally, he does hike it. But uh, if he's bringing heavy stuff or he's hauling things up, he drives his truck, which he's quite happy he has a place that he can drive up and down. See, look how big that radish plant is. That's one plant. All because that compost bin is there and I throw things in there and I water the compost bin. Remember, whether you have something planted in something or not, you really need to keep it wet. That keeps everything alive in there. And that compost bin, I just flood it with water, it drains right out, it is feeding. See how the truck bed is lifted up there at the back? It just feeds that radish plant. And that's how you make your plants in the monsters. It's the way you're feeding them. And you don't even have to buy the food. You can, but you can make it with your own leaves in the garden. Anyways, let's keep going down. I'm down now, but I see a whole bunch of rabbits. I think I saw like three or four of them. There's Mama. And there's that one. Look at that. There's a whole bunch of them running through here. Look, look, look. Oh, they're babies. Those are young ones. Look at that. Now, Mama, that's the one that probably has the babies in the truck bed, is right there. See how smart she is? She wants me to follow her. She sees me. I'm not that far from her. But she wants me to follow her. This keeps me away from the truck bed where she knows where she has put her babies. Now, there's another rabbit there. And they're just hanging around. That's just one of one that ran off. There was a whole bunch of them. I saw a whole bunch run off. But that's Mama. She wants me to follow her. A lot of different birds do that. They do the broken wing thing, and it's like, follow me, follow me. Okay, people have asked, what's going on with the bees? Well, like I said, today is cooler than normal. We're in, I think, the upper 50s, and there are the bees. I can dare to get a little closer. But he said they're there. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're coming out. They don't want to leave far because it's still cool, but they'll be out soon. Let's see if I can zoom in. Gary's working on his own video. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Is that cool? I guess I've gotten better because normally, 10 years ago, I probably would have been running and screaming. Look at that. They're still building. And Gary's got all the research on how they're building and how much of a honeycomb they've got. He's going to work on his barbecue, and I have a feeling we'll be getting beehives. And look at that. Mom is still sitting there. She wants me to follow her. See her in the grass? See, she's sitting there, and she wants me to watch her. She's not moving. She will if I get probably too close. Look at that. Is that now and that makes me think for sure that she's got babies. She is perfectly happy with me right here. Oh, I'm not gonna bother your babies. Now we're what 15 feet away. See, she is she knows if she can see me, and she knows I walked over by her babies, that she knows I'm not gonna go there. And so she's lured me over here. Watch me. And she'll be perfectly happy when I continue on my way, which I'm going to. But it's just fascinating how nature is. All right, let's leave her be. 
she's watching me. She probably wants to go back and finish with her baby since when I walked over there, she popped out. And I'm sure she buried him real quick because I didn't see him. I don't want to dig around for him. There's no reason for that. If I disturb him too much, I could end up caving the hole or whatever she's got there. So I'm just going to leave her be. But there she is. No, we're not going to bother your babies. Look at this. I can walk up to her. She wants me to be with her. Oh, wonderful. Okay, let's continue on our way. And she's still standing there. She doesn't even care. And let's go look and see what's going on in Gary's garden. I haven't been in Gary's garden since the last video I made on his garden. So let's see what's going on. Oh, look at that. Oh, let's see if I can zoom in. We have so many different types of birds and it is interesting on as the season goes on, the birds change. There's some that are here all the time. The hummingbirds are here all the time. But there are some birds, like I said, the white crowned sparrows, they just disappeared. They were here one day and the next day they were all gone. It was amazing. It was just gone. I, I couldn't believe it. Look at this. This stays damp in here. So we have like a whole different ecosystem down here for wildlife. Look at that. Look at that. Got fruit growing down there. Now these are good size. Oh, they're coming right off the tree. And the coyotes are eating them too, because when I walked along the front, the seeds are... Yes, I've seen that. They don't digest it, so it, co it comes out in coyotes yeah. the way it went in. They're dispersing seed. People don't realize coyotes eat fruit. Coyotes eat fruit, they'll eat vegetables, they eat meat, they eat dogs, they eat cats, and of course rabbits. And this is where a lot of wildlife live. And this is just beautiful down here. I believe those are loquats. Look at that. Okay, so these are all these trees that someday he wants to replace with more fruit trees. And I, we've talked about that before. And you know what? I think he's in his garden. I didn't know that. I don't know where he is. Half the time he's on one side of the property. And then the next time he's on the other side. So let's go in and see what's going on in his garden. I see he's got raspberry. Oh, this is asparagus. Oh, look. A purple asparagus. Oh, my goodness. His purple passion. He did bring me one up last week. A really big one. And I know he wants a lot of them to grow because they have to grow bushy to get more each year. And what he finds fascinating right now is the rabbits do not eat it. I'll tell you a secret I haven't done yet. That's a very interesting plant. And he's thinking of planting them all over the front of his garden. Because I grew a bunch of asparagus seeds for him. This is not a garden tour, but let's go ahead and talk about it. And when I went out in the evening and watered it lightly, it smelled like skunk. It had a really musk smell, like let's say a fox or a, or a, I guess a fox would have it, a skunk would have it, maybe even some of your coyotes, like a musk smell. And we're wondering if that keeps away deer. So he'll see, but right now, it just has an odor at night when you water it. His apple trees are making a comeback. If they get any apples on them, which I see flowers, maybe I'll wrap them in tulle. But these are raspberries. Okay, Gary is there. Are these raspberries or blackberries here? I think it's a combination of both. Okay, so we have both raspberries and blackberries. Okay, we're going to keep walking. Here's his wood chip pile, the one he hasn't moved yet. But he does want to replace, like I said earlier, he wants to replace these with guamachil and different plants and trees, I should say, that don't have such an invasive root system, as well as they will give you food. But see, he's made a trail so he can get through into his trees. Now here's Gary's guamachil. And I cannot wait till these things start to grow and eat. So this, this starts off, starts off, this is all new growth? This is all new growth. So it's semi-deciduous. So it's still got leaves like this from last year. 
and it kind of starts to grow the new leaves and drops the old ones. And when the new growth comes in, it's this colour. See how it's that sort of pinkish colour? So it starts pink? Yeah, and later oh, okay, on... Okay, let me see. Okay. And later on you can see all this area here and down through here it's starting to turn green. Like this branch here is all pretty much all green. Isn't that something? So it starts off in a red color and then as it gets older it turns green. And what about the flowers? No flowers yet, no right? Flowers yet, no flowers yet, I don't blame it. It's waiting for the warmer weather. Look at that. And here, back east, it's got snow. They're under snow again. Wow, that's beautiful. He's got another apple tree. I'm going to have to keep track of this because I know he gets busy. And I want to make sure anything that starts to turn into apples, I'm going to wrap tool all over it. I'm tempted to net tool completely around. See, wire is great, and that keeps away your rabbits but that won't keep away your rats or your squirrels because that wire, when you get this heavy gauge wire, that's a climbing fence for squirrels. They can climb over that. Rabbits don't really generally climb, but your squirrels will, your rats will, your mice will. So the tool is what they don't touch, but this is just something, it's sturdy. They can put their nails in there and climb up. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then he's got more apple trees growing here. Let's go inside and see what's going on. I have to make sure I close the gate on his because he made his rabbit proof and the last time he left the gate open the rabbit beelined in here. Oh wow! I don't think these pools were set up. They were, you just had the pools but no plants yet, right? Yeah, I've just started planting from the last time you were here, I guess. What I'm doing is what you do in Australia. I'm just doing a walkabout and not talking about how I'm doing things, even though I've kind of did a little bit of that, but just showing what is growing right now this time of the year, even though we have been below normal in temperature, just to see what is growing. What is, what is growing here? What are these little things? Oh, these are tomatillos? Yeah, those are the tomatillos you gave me. These are the ones I gave you? They took off, they were tiny when you yes. took them. Some are in clumps, but some I were able to separate. Oh, wow. I see you've got in, what's in the paper cut system that I do? The oh, I know what that is. Red Roselle? Red Roselle, yep. That's right. Oh, you still have the gnomes. I Look, the he's got his gnomes. a little more because I wanted to make sure they settled in. Right, because the birds, I guess, could come down one chomp and they would be gone. Now, these already both have fish in them. Yes. And you've got mosquito fish and... I've got rosy red minnows and gambusia or mosquito fish in both. I don't know if I should ask you questions or you're doing your own video no, on this. Well, you can ask. Okay, the pools, because I don't know myself. Are there holes on the bottom of the pools? Are they getting water from the... From, yeah, from the main pool. The fish are going to come your way. From the main pool, there's holes, these came out of your garden, so there's holes That's from right. around the outside edge, underneath. Uh, what about on the very bottom? Not on, I don't think there's any on the very bottom. Okay, so the holes are on the side. So this will always be wet. This is always wet. This, this is wicking up from the pool below. So you don't water this at all? You don't have to water it at all. Oh my! And this is pure wood chips. That's one thing that, yeah, strawberries will grow in pure wood chips. Look at all the strawberries! So what can't get to them? Can mice make a leap? Mice might be able to make a leap if they were interested. Slugs and snails can't get across. That's right, you can't, they can't get across. So if you found any that might have been tiny on one of the plants, you just pick them off and then there won't be any more. Pick them off, drop them in with the fish. Um, yeah, there's strawberries, there's some mint. I think there's mint in a couple of places. Celery. Celery. Wow. Like I said, this is just a walkabout. We'll have to do a full garden tour on this. And oh, you're digging down here today. So what are you doing down here today? I'm trying to get rid of some. Well, 
this will be where the next ponds are going. It'll continue across that direction. And I'm trying to get rid of the, uh, the run weed with the runner. Let's Oh, the Bermuda grass? Bermuda grass, yep. In case you have it down here too. I, I have it in this bed. This, is, this bed had horse or donkey manure in it. Okay, so, so when you're getting rid of Bermuda grass, you do not compost that? No, that's going into the trash, and I'm going to try to get all the roots. Yeah, the only way you could compost Bermuda grass is if you were doing a hot compost to definitely kill everything. Hot compost will kill everything, but uh, a cold compost won't. So... It might kill some, but it's not going to really kill that much. I'm just going to walk through. Anything else I should know about? Oh, here's the wild mint we want to get rid of. Yeah. Oh, look how good the wild mint is doing. Mine was doing good too, but I just don't like the taste of it. Wow, and you've got nasturtiums growing there? No. No, those are the nasturtiums from the front. When I trimmed them away from the road, I just dragged them down to compost them in place because they're setting seed. And that was a week ago, and the flowers are still fading from what was left on the plant. So next year, you're going to have nasturtiums all through your yard. Yeah, I'll have some nasturtiums coming up everywhere. See, there's some seed pods that are still green, and I figured if I just composted them under my bananas, they'll come up, and then I can move them to where I want them. You don't know where the nest is from the Oriole, do you? Because he just went into the center. Yeah, he's... But no, I haven't been able to find that yet, but I found the house finch nest. You can see that. Okay, I'll let you get in front of me. Look at the nasturtiums. So this is just going to self-seed all because you're composting a oh, Look at the fish. We're going to look at the fish. Look at that. And those are the rosy red min minnows, the orange ones. And they get big. Yeah, they get really big because I think when you bought them, they were smaller, weren't they? They were smaller and they're filling out too. Wow. Look at that. So yeah. you just threw all this. Yeah, that's just... Oh, they have running. runners. You know, I have never paid attention to how they grow. And these are the seed pods and they're starting to form. But the flowers are still flowering, so it's still feeding from the vine. Wow. So somewhere in here you've got an oriole nest. Yeah, I haven't... Because he ducked inside just now. I saw him. I haven't found the oriole nest I yet. saw bananas a second ago. But the house finch nest is just under here. I don't know if I can get in here. I need to step in here. Oh, look at that. Have you seen her? I haven't seen her. Not, not for a while. But she's got the babies. Yeah. This okay, is what um, you're hearing. And that, you had bananas up there. Yeah, that one didn't really set that well. Okay, let me see if I can get out of here. Whoa, this is really thick back here. Your wood chips and your nasturtiums and everything. Okay, I don't know where he went, but I saw him go in the center. So they've really hid their nest this time really well. Okay. Well, this was a nice little walkabout. I just walked around and saw the rabbit leave and you missed it but oh my goodness she lured me away and she never went away i saw all these rabbits running everywhere but she lured me away yeah and she let me get really close to her because she wanted me to leave the truck bed so smart is this asparagus growing all oh no this is dill. dill and i saw you have some asparagus around your pond too yeah that's what i got from you from the back Okay, I wanted, I wanted to see the Oriole nest, but I don't know where she's nested. They've been going in and out, so there's a nest somewhere, but this time I think they went deep inside, so you can't see them. But he, they keep going in and out, and I've heard a lot of babies screaming, you know, being fed, but I have no idea where it's coming from. Okay, well, I think I've done my circle. Now, is this, this is fennel, right? That's fennel, yeah. That's yeah. wild fennel. Wild fennel. Do you eat that? Yeah, I eat it. Oh my gosh. Look at all the greens. I just walked through here, what, a month ago? Yeah, I oh, I know what I wanted to show. Where is your tree color that fell down? There's one, one along there. The one that fell down that's growing upward? That's what I want to show. I've talked about it. Okay, here's one. He didn't stake his. 
Let's see. I can't get in. There's no way to really get in there, is there? Okay, I'm going to go there. See what happened. Let me see if you can see this. See, the trunk fell. But see what it's doing? The trunk's going to set roots. And they're sending all these new shoots up. So it's growing now straight up. The young ones, see? Yeah, there's a lot of little ones there that... Look at that. And it's, they're just, the new ones are just growing up. Now, all those technically should be snapped off and put in pots. But yeah. that's what that's growing. You said you have another. I didn't know you had two that fell over. Yeah, that's in front of the artichoke. Okay, same thing there. Now it's so hard. When I came down here last time, you didn't have all this green greenery going on. But you can see the trunk is laying completely on the ground. And see, this is the tree. I guess it's coming. Oh, that's another one. You've got a whole bunch of them that yeah. fell over. You did not stake any of no, your... I didn't, I didn't have time to stake any. I didn't have time. This, didn't stake... This is what I'm waiting <gasps> Well, that's actually ready to eat. Yeah. Oh, you definitely have to cover that. We're going to have to get that with tool. Unless you're going to let it go to flower. Well, I'm not sure if the ants will get through the tool, but so far there's no bugs down here. Wow. We have artichokes, but see how he, he does not stake any of them. So when they fall, that one just wind, wound around and it came back up. So that's one plant there. And then the other one starts there and it goes through there. But it's growing all new plants up. Which is kind of cool because instead of him having one big one, now he's got a whole bunch of small ones growing all along there. So that's how nature works. They just fall and start growing from the side and then they grow back up too. Oh my gosh, look at all those. Swiss chard, you've got green, you've got the red, you've got everything, they're all going to seed. Look how beautiful tree color it is. I love the way the tree collards grow and the leaves you can bring in two leaves and make dinner for two people just shred it up a little butter and a little bit of water and on pot and you have it done in five minutes that's why I'm excited about the red I hope the red grow is nice I'm thinking by nature it probably won't but let's hope I'm wrong and it will grow just as big and just as beautiful as the green usually the green ones seem to always grow nicer but then the red Swiss chard is growing as nice so we'll see how it does here but we know for sure that the green variety does excellent here. And you just try different things. So this is going to be exciting if they'll take off, and I hope they will. All right. Oh, then you got pepinos here too. Yeah, I've got to get those. The rest of those covered. I've got some covered here already. And they're starting to ripen. Oh. So they're turning the yellow color. Yeah, and you can use them whether they're ripe or not ripe. If they're not ripe, you cook them, right? Yep. Yeah, the tool really does help. Otherwise, they'll get eaten. And then you've got them up here, too. Wow, they really like it down here. Yeah. Mine are, grow really slow, but they're in direct sunlight. And here, maybe with this effect of sunlight, 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 they're doing better. I don't know. But this is how many plants? This is two or three here. Okay, I've and only got these, one. These are producing wine colored fruit. And the one on the other side is producing the typical striped fruit. That one's really nice looking. I'll follow you. I think I'm stepping on dill and stuff. If you see, see them in the store, they'll look something like that. Look how beautiful. Oh, cool. All right. And then, you, of course, you've got all your curly kale growing everywhere. Look at that. And then this is all pepino through here, too. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, I'll let you get back to work. I think I've done my walkabout. And this is just something different I decided to do since it's so quiet. Usually during the week, you've got the gardeners out. And though our properties are far apart, everything carries in the canyon. You hear noises from... You hear the trains blowing their horns from way, way down in the city. So it's been nice and quiet today, and I thought I would take you all on a walkabout. Look how beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. And he leaves south thistle in here, too, because the birds will come down here and they eat that. That's a big part of the wild bird's diet. Okay, so I think with that, have a wonderful day.
And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye.